Welcome to Discovering. Some of the most beautiful wood anywhere is found right here in the Upper Peninsula. Tonight we'll pay a visit to Nature's Way Woodworking for a look at some of the amazing creations by Dave Stimak. The real joy is in making stuff. That's what I like to do. I, I like to make stuff. Stick around. That's all tonight right here on Discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. Call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure, the only way I measure. Feelings that I have for this fine land, there is so much to discover. When you're a long-time lover of northern Michigan Bird's Eye Maple. What is it? Where is it? And how did it get there? I visited with Dave Stimak of Nature's Way Woodworking in the historic town of Alberta to get the scoop on bird's eye and for a look at some of the amazing things he turns it into. You can say it both ways, either bird eye maple or bird's eye maple. I like to use the old bird eye. That's what I was always taught by the old, old timers there. Uh, but it grows 90 to 95 percent of the bird's eye. Bird eye is in the world comes from the UP. And it comes from along the Lake Superior watershed area. A um, few counties up here. I'm from Munising, working over, you know, Marquette County, Barraga County, Houghton, Keweenaw, and up over into Ontonagon, but along the south shore of Lake Superior, predominantly where it, where it grows. And um, the thing is, in those areas, there's genetics. You know, it's been said that, oh, it's the diseased wood and this or that, but there's genetics in the sugar, it's sugar maple, and there's genetics in the sugar maple that with the proper growing conditions will trigger the bird eye to grow. And those conditions are high elevation, prone to drought, northeast slopes, um, crowded conditions, real crowded, uh, fighting for sunlight, uh, things like that, rocky, but the higher elevation too. And, and, and that's what really um, triggers those genetics to kick in and, and produce the bird's eye. And the proof of that is you can take, cut a tree down, and, and you look on the end of the log, you'll see the rays. You'll see the bird's eye growing out in there. Some of those trees won't have that growing all the way out to the end. You can count back the annual rings and count back, say, 20, 30 years, and uh, say, why is there no bird's eye here? And there is down in towards the heart. Well, 20, 30 years ago, if you go look back in the records, they logged that area, and they relieved the stress off the trees, and the bird's eye quit growing. So it's actual, it's proof that that's, you know, uh, what's causing the bird eye. Each eye is actually a knot in the wood, every little eye, and so it's a son of a gun to work with. It's hard as a rock. The grain switches up when you're going in different directions. The eyes want to pull out. So it's, it takes a lot of patience uh, to work with it. And a lot of people don't like doing that. I didn't to start with, but when you do something with it and you do it properly, it'll come out nice, you know, and I got the equipment. I you know, saved up and started buying some good equipment to work with. So it just takes a lot of patience and rubbing and, you know, sanding. But it's fun. And it's, it's unique. It's unique to the UP. You'll find pockets of bird eye up in Canada and some here and there. It's, but for the majority, it's up here. It's uh, like they claim 90, 95% of the bird eye in the world comes from up here in the UP. So it's more unique to the UP than, say, copper. You know, they find copper in Arizona and Chile and all over the place. You don't the bird's eye is really a unique, unique thing up here. So, I've been buying bird's eye for many, many, many years now, so I got a pretty good pile. I'm not in the business of selling lumber, but once in a while, 
somebody will come by, they want a board or two, you know, and I'll sell it to them and once in a while. Somebody's making a guitar, or they need a guitar neck. I, uh, actually, I've shipped out wood for guitar necks to some people. So I have quite a bit. This is all kiln dried. I have my own dry kiln where I dry my own lumber. I buy, I've been buying logs for years, so, uh, you know, that's another part of it. Well, the table, this started 10 years ago. Um, we were sitting in a hilltop restaurant, my wife and I, talking to uh, Lee, the owner. She's huge in the animal shelter, the Copper Country Humane Society, um, up in, uh, outside of Houghton. And she asked about a donation that maybe helped them out for the shelter. And we're animal lovers, of course. And uh, so we said, well, let's do something good for them. And uh, we started out with one of these coffee tables. And uh, this is 10 years now. This is our 10th year anniversary. So I made a dandy this year. I, I think it's a dandy because we, you know, I, I do bird's eye maple. But um, I did something different here with some walnut. We got book mats, walnut burl in here with a cherry burl in, in here. And then curly maple, local curly maple apron. These are curly maple uh, paw prints in there. We had to throw that in for the shelter. We do that every year, you know. Yeah, that's a little tricky doing that kind of stuff. Time consuming, uh, you know, it seems like everything I do is, is pretty much time consuming, but it's fun. It's, uh, what I try, try to do is strive for quality. If you're gonna do something, do it nice and try to make it look good and, you know, do your best at it. And it's, it's just the way it is. It's been going good. We've, uh, we've done real well. Um, it's a great group up there, No Kill Shelter. Unbelievable group of people with all the volunteers and that that they have. So trying to raise money for them, they can always use it, you know. Um, we have rocks in here from all over the world, but um, I get orders too for tables local. We, we'll do uh, uh, strictly copper country tables. We'll do strictly Michigan stones or stones from all over the world. What we do is inlay them in, and, and the table comes with a, also comes with a map stating all the stones, where they're from, and then a, a diagram of, of what they are and where they're all from. A little history on the stone. This is some uh, green tree moss agate. That's from India. And here's a uh, fish fossil from out the uh, Green River Formation out in Wyoming. Uh, we've got, actually gone out and picked some of these out there. It's a ball going out there doing this stuff. The background on this, try to go with a little history to it. Uh, the copper, the copper country, by the way, is loaded with uh, unbelievable different, it's a geological paradise up there. People come from all over for that and um, just uh, to, to pick rocks. But the stamp sand is from the old stamp mills from when the copper mines are running up there in the, in the Keweenaw. This is from over by the Gay Smelter, but this is the stampings. It's a little bit of history there too. We get these babies so they're a little bit under there. Here's a little conglomerate, uh, epidote and copper and quartz in here. This is from up in the Keweenaw. And uh, try to fit these in. We might move them around later, but we, we play around with this too. Take the rock and pour that in between get this all in and get it nice and level. This is barite from Glocashire, Glocashire, England. A little epidote from down Champion Way. This is a nice local stuff here. Oh, there's so much stuff out there, it's crazy. Yeah, maybe we'll put that there. My wife usually does a lot of this inlaying. Malachite from Zaire, Africa. This is a uh, septarian nodule from Morocco, this one here. So, so you learn a little bit when you're doing this stuff. You gotta make darn sure that you don't have these above because I will put this through. It'll go through my sander over here, sandy smooth, and then I'll, I'll flood coat it. I use a polymer coating that goes over. It's epoxy, basically. And then it has a glass top, too, that goes over it so to protect it. And, but it's a lot of fun. Sky's the limit. The only problem is, is with these smaller tables like this, you're limited and you got so many nice rocks you wanna put in, pretty soon you run out of room. So the real joy is in making stuff. That's what I like to do. I, I like to make stuff. I call it tinkering, really. That's what I do, is I tinker. And uh, it kind of gets into detail sometimes, or it's some pretty wild tinkering, but hey, that's what's fun. You gotta, there we go, look at that. Not bad. And then we'll put a little thing in here, too, with some engraving, and it's 2016 Copper Country Humane Society, uh, 10th anniversary or something, maybe. These are going to be, they're the door fronts for uh, some gun cases that I'm making. Uh, for a single gun, uh, I got an order for one. I'm going to make two extras just to have in a gift shop because they sell. And, um, you know, it'll flip up. And I can show you the bases over there. But the doors, these are just the doors for them. They have glass and everything. And some I put lights in. But uh, the one I'm going to do, it's going to have a, um, 
what is it? Henry, the Golden Boys, the, uh, that version that they did for um, the mining up in the, up in the Keweenaw. I think there was, I don't know, 20, 30 of them made. So a guy wanted one made for that to put in for his grandson. And the wood doesn't look that good now. When we get finish on this, this sucker's going to light up. It's really going to look good once we get the finish on her. These are the backs for the gun cases. The door will go on. Got a piano hinge along the top. Got some book match curly maple in the center there. That's some pretty wild stuff. And then the doors are held down with, uh, they shot with a magnet. Nice little rare earth magnet so it's all hidden, concealed. So they'll look pretty good. Tom Basis invented this um, style rocker. It's a Basis pedestal rocker. And uh, you'll see the ones up there. There's no legs on it. But um, he taught me how to do the, the joinery. The back support gets put in with a dovetail joint. There's no metal in these things whatsoever. It's all fitted. Uh, not a piece of metal in these, in these rockers at all. So everything's fitted and they won't come apart. That's the strongest joint there is right there is that dovetail. So, and it goes together in pieces. So that's the nice, the nice part about these things is I could put a back support on this or I could make a different, a different back for a certain rocker and then the seats. There's a double uh, mortise and tenon here. This is tapered. This is tapered in here so that uh, it can't come out because you use the ax wedge down there. And, uh, and then I'll sculpt them. Do all the hand, you know, the sculpting. They're all sculpted by hand. I've got probably an average of about 300 hours into each rocker. So there's a lot of, lot of intense work going on them, but they're, they're, they're a lot of fun, and they're, you know, you can make, do anything you want. So there's a lot of sculpting, you know, a lot of hand sculpting on these babies. Just to get it there, and then the actual sanding and finishing. And I put Danish oil on them. Uh, I get uh, several coats of Danish oil on here and then rub it out and oh, it just gleams. It feels like silk when you're done. They really feel good. Of course, they're all named after rock and roll songs and this one is going to be uh, Riding the Storm Out by REO Speedwagon. And I'm going to add some stuff on here so it's more like it's moving, a little bit of uh, movement out of this baby. And, uh, but I like to do another one um, and I want to make it look like it's melting. And uh, like it's just sitting there really, really kicked back. It's going to be comfortably numb, Pink Floyd. Love it. That's what I'm going to do. That's going to be the next one. There's two people in the world making rockers like that. Tom Bezos and myself, he taught me how to do this. And that was another story. But the guy's amazing. He bet a guy a bottle of booze that he could make a better rocker than him. And Tom came up with this pedestal design rocker. Because a normal rock rocker with four legs, it's like this and it's fighting. It's like a square. And sooner or later, most rockers will come loose. This will not. Uh, it's construction is designed as the strongest rocker you're gonna find. So I met Tom at, at Art Show in Marquette and um, we hit it off, you know, being woodworkers and that. And so he came up here and he taught me how to do this. Um, the sculpting, the joinery and everything. There's no metal in a rocker, none at all. It's all fitting, so dovetails. Um, up the, the, arm, the um, arms go on to the, to the support with dovetails. Everything's fitted. And, so, and then he taught me the sculpting, and then I kind of took off on my own um, designs. And that's the nice part about the rocker. You can make a back and, and make it whatever you want or different themes. So I do my thing, and, and uh, Tom has a whole different what he does on his. But I, uh, you know, I've kind of gone out into the Harley thing and... The Philadelphia Freedom, I named the first rocker I made after his hometown. That's where he's from, so it was Philadelphia Freedom. This is the second one there. He designed it, and a uh, phenomenal woodworker. He, uh, he kind of got me going on this, and I can't thank the guy enough. He's uh, just incredible. Now, you can sit in this rocker, and it, and it feels nice. But here's the, here's the trick. As you put your arms out like this, you come ahead. You put your arms back. It rocks. You see that? Just with your, your weight, it's balanced. This is how you can tell when a rocker is just with your weight distribution. See that? Um, as you know, these rockers, they're all uh, named after a rock and roll song. And uh, I've, I've, I've done three of the motorcycle uh, 
ones I'm working on, the fourth one that I was working on there, that's going to be, I think, that's riding the storm out. Uh, this one here is uh, bad to the bone. George Thorogood and the Destroyers here. I uh, went a little, little better on this one. We put the ape hangers on, you know, added a little leather. They, underneath the seat, we have the V of the engine. There's uh, on one side the air cleaner, and then this style here has the turned out tailpipes. And of course, a drip pan. All Harleys leak oil, at least they used to anyway. Nowadays, they don't, but uh, got to have a drip pan under your Harley. So they're a lot of fun. I just love making these things. Uh, you can get creative, you know, that's, that's the nice thing about it. I've made uh, 10 rockers, and I've sold six of them now. I have four left. I do have. Uh, Freebird is another one of these here uh, down in uh, Hiawatha Log Homes over in Wetmore. But uh, the rocking chairs are really, you know, a lot of work. But they're, they're worth it. When you, when, you, when you finish one of these, you feel like you've actually accomplished something, you know. It's, uh, it's worth doing. Like I said, I got about 300 hours probably average into each rocker. I will do like two, three rockers at a time when I'm making parts and that for them. I, I never make hardly ever one of anything. So that's why I... Uh, I'll do a few, so I'll get the parts made up, and then I can start sculpting into, into different designs, different themes. There's bird eye maple here, and, um, and then it goes down into, right here is the uh, quilted maple. That's big leaf maple from out in the Pacific rainforest. And then the accent trim is walnut. The main thing is that I use, I do is bird's eye. This is our most popular, by far. We call them the courtship candles. I didn't invent this. A fellow from Dollar Bay did this, and um, but these are our most popular item is the courtship candles and um, wedding gifts. They're perfect for weddings. Um, we can laser engrave them with uh, bride and groom's names on them. They're lead weighted on the bottom so they don't tip over. Here's the story that goes with them. This is when you first meet right here, okay? This is first kiss right here, okay. Now, here we go. That's cuddling. This is engaged right there. Maybe... Your first argument, how about that? Then you could maybe have 30 years. You could have one out in the garage and one in the boathouse. Who knows? <laughs> and another thing is what a lot of people will do with these things is they'll um, give them to the bride and groom a little before the wedding, and they use them in a ceremony. We do them in cherry, bird eye maple, a little bit of curly. I got a couple of walnut ones. But for the most part, we sell a lot of the bird eye and uh, cherry. They're real popular. <laughs>
we started cutting in and we got into the bird's eye maple. I said, oh boy, and it was really interesting. And I started stashing a little bit here and there. But uh, that's where the love and the, and the interest in the bird's eye maple started. Nature's Way Woodworking actually uh, started in 1994. Out of my house, I was working, I had a lathe in the basement, and it was all full of dust, the place, I was getting yelled at all the time, you know how that goes. We started, I had suggestions from uh, people, and maybe you should start doing some shows, going to those, so my wife says, well, you need a credit card. I said, what, we need a credit card? He said, yeah, you gotta take credit cards, so I went to the bank. The lady at the bank says, what's the name of your business? I said, uh, I don't have a name. She said, you gotta have a business name, so, at the time, we had an inmate crew working here. So I, I come back, I told the inmates, I said, by the end of this day, we're gonna have a, a, a name for my business. And it's possible that you may name it. And I said, if I use it, I'm gonna cook you a hamburger. And food went a long way with inmates, you know. So at the end of the day, they had some suggestions in a hat. I pulled them out and one of them was nature's way. Nature's Way Woodworking. And I said, wow, I like that. How'd you get that? And the guy said, I was listening to the radio and, and a song came on. It was Nature's Way by Spirit. Off the 12 Dreams of Dr. Sardonicus. I said, wow, I love that album. I said, it's a great song. I said, that's it. I cooked him two cheeseburgers deluxe and that's how Nature's Way started. I, I started tinkering around John Sikorsky, as I had mentioned. Uh, he was making these tables and putting rocks in them. And so I did some of the woodworking for him. And, he said, well, Dave, I owe you a bunch of money for the wood. I, he said, why don't I show you this rock stuff? But that's how the rock thing evolved. That expanded into three years ago, started up a little rock room, said maybe we can sell rocks. You can't believe how many rocks people buy. We love the rocks, so they go together. The, you know, it's all natural and it's nature's way is what it is. And, This weekend, take a drive to Rapid River for the Cabin Fever Gun and Knife Show hosted by the Marble Plus Knife Club. The show is held at the Rapid River Lions Club from 12 to 7 on Friday and 9 to 3 on Saturday. Admission is only 5 bucks. Children under 12 and women are free. For more information, contact Dennis Moberg at 789-5474. That's it for tonight. Hope to see you next week right here on Discovery.